Good day, and thanks for joining in as we get a drug picture of the selective beta-1 adrenergic antagonist, or the selective beta-1 blockers. Atenolol, metoprolol, and other OLOL drugs are the beta-1 blockers. The OLOL affix means that they are beta blockers, but it doesn't tell you whether it's selective or non-selective. Atenolol and metoprolol are the selective beta-1 blockers, meaning that they predominantly affect the beta-1 receptors and they block the actions of adrenaline, or epinephrine in the United States, at the beta-1 receptors. Beta blockers are primarily used to treat tachycardia, myocardial infarction, and hypertension. And these beta blockers have fewer side effects than the non-selective beta blockers. But they're still not considered the first-line treatment for hypertension due to the fact that there's at least four other antihypertensive agents that are more efficacious. Atenolol and metoprolol are, however, the first-line treatment for myocardial infarction, as they have been shown to reduce the mortality and morbidity. Now let's take a closer look at these drugs. Atenolol and metoprolol are selective beta-1 blockers. And this means that they predominantly bind to the beta-1 adrenergic receptors. The main location of the beta-1 adrenergic receptors, and therefore the main effect of beta blockers, is on the heart. And since adrenaline, or epinephrine in the United States, speeds up the heart and increases the contractility, we can expect beta blockers to do exactly opposite that effect. Also, it may help us in understanding these drugs if we know a little bit more about the selective nature of these. We said it was selective for the beta-1. How selective are they? Well, these drugs can actually bind to other adrenergic receptors, but at normal doses, there's going to be very little binding to, for instance, the beta-2 receptor, and they're not contraindicated in people with asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like non-selective beta blockers. And so the selective beta-1 blocking drugs, atenolol and metoprolol, are uh, safer and have less side effects than the non-selective beta blockers. But for controlling hypertension, calcium channel blockers, thiazide diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers are all more efficacious. Nonetheless, you will find the selective Beta blockers combined with hydrochlorothiazide for greater efficacy in the treatment of hypertension. Atenolol is not as lipophilic as metoprolol, so atenolol doesn't get into the blood brain barrier as much and it doesn't cause those vivid dreams, nightmares that metoprolol would. And finally, there's a couple other uses of atenolol and metoprolol, uh, treatment of heart failure, treatment of hypertension, treatment of post-myocardial infarction, but also they're used off-label for the treatment of performance anxiety, social anxiety, and other anxiety disorders. And now you understand that atenolol, metoprolol, and other OLOL drugs are selective beta-1 blockers. Being a selective beta-1 blocker, they have far fewer side effects than the non-selective beta blockers, but they still decrease the heart rate and decrease the contractility of the heart 
leading to a slight decrease in blood pressure. So tenolol and metoprolol are used in the treatment of tachycardia, myocardial infarction, and they're also used off-label for people with anxiety disorders. They're still also used in hypertension, especially if combined with other medications like hydrochlorothiazide. But by themselves, there's several other more efficacious medicines for the treatment of hypertension. And now you know. Thanks for joining us.